Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today we're making hot links. These hot links that I'm preparing today are a pork hot link, not to be confused with the Red Hots down in Texas, but we're gonna do it all the way from scratch, starting with this pork butt. So here we have our Boston butt pork shoulder. We're gonna be utilizing all this excess fat on the fat cap, but at first I wanna feel around and make sure that there's not anything cartilage-wise left behind, anything hard that you don't want to go into your sausage. And this one looks pretty clean. I think we're in good shape. So the easiest way to handle this is to kind of follow the blade bone down until you get around the blade bone sitting right here. And once you get around it, you kind of slice straight through. Now that gives you a really nice hunk of meat to start carving away at. Oh, there we go. Found a little piece of cartilage. So that's something you want to look for. We'll get rid of that. All right, so let's start taking strips out of the pork butt. And the size just depends on your grinder. A lot of times cubes are the best way to go. Uh, my grinder does a good job of taking in a whole strip at a time, but it's not a bad idea to have some cubes because we're gonna try and firm this up in the freezer first, and uh, it'll do that a little bit quicker if we have cubes to work with. And this is the reason that we use the Boston butt. Look at all the fat content in there. That's exactly what you're looking for when it comes to making sausage. Now, I'd hope to have this sausage somewhere in the 75% meat to 25% fat ratio. When it comes to the blade side of the butt, you're just gonna do your best to carve out in that odd shaped blade all of the meat. And then really anything that's left behind if you have just a little bit stuck to that bone, that bone makes for great pork stock. Now this recipe we're doing today, you can scale up or down. Uh, it's all based on the per poundage as far as the seasonings go. We're probably gonna do about five pounds today, but you know, sausage making's a lot of work. So if you've got the time, you might as well go ahead and do 20 pounds of these at a time. So I'm just gonna scale out five pounds of this pork shoulder. I'll maybe go just a touch over because I have it and there's gonna be some loss in the process. And then I'm just gonna transfer this to a sheet pan. Uh, if you got, you know, like a casserole dish or something like that, something that you can get some surface area on that will still fit in your freezer. The more surface area you've got, the faster this is going to set up for you. And the reason that we're going to put this into the freezer is because we want all of the elements of the sausage to be as cold as possible as we're making the sausage. If the meat ever gets warm enough to where the fat can start to melt, it will totally change the texture of the sausage. For these hot links, I'm going to be using a handful of items that you can grab right off the shelf here at All Things Barbecue. You guys out there in internet land, check out atbbq.com to pick up any of these. We're going to start off with the Cattleman's Grill Carne Asada 8 Second Ride. And then we've got some Code 3 Spices Grunt Rub. Great garlic flavor in here. A little bit of that House of Q Slow Smoke Gold, one of my favorite mustard sauces. And you gotta have some hog casings, fresh, natural hog casings. These hog casings, they need some time to soak before we can actually stuff the sausage into them. So what I'm gonna do here is just open this up. And one of these little packages will do 25 pounds of sausage. So we're gonna open this up and start to tear this thing apart. And since we're doing a smaller amount today, I'm not going to be using all of these casings. All right, so these are gonna go into warm water. And this warm water is going to allow these to become more pliable. And then here in a little bit, about an hour or so, we're going to start to rinse the salt from the inside of the casings because these have been sitting in a salt mixture. As for the rest of these casings, I'm going to tie these back up so they don't get all tangled. We'll put them back into the bag and then just cover them in kosher salt and throw them in the fridge. These will keep for a long time when they're packed in salt. So we're gonna take these casings that we've soaked and start to rinse them out.
You want to get yourself a bowl with some cold water running in there. And then you're just going to open up the ends, get some water in there, and run it all the way through to the other side. You get to that other side, turn around and go back the other way. So you'll do this a couple of times and then find the ends and transfer it to a bowl of clean water. If you leave these ends hanging out together, you'll always know where those are when you come to work with this piece of the casing. And then you'll want to refresh the water so that you're not just working with salty water the whole time. Repeat the same process, find the end, open that up, scoop some water in there, and run it through the casing. Get to that far end, run it back the other way. All right, and that's how we rinse the casings. Make sure you keep them nice and organized as you transfer over. Try not to tangle anything. Just work your way around the bowl, always keeping the ends of your casings on the edge so you know right where they are. Well, the pork is really set up nicely. It's not frozen all the way through, but it's pretty firm on the outside. We've got all of our equipment here for grinding that's been in the freezer as well. So we're keeping all of these components nice and cold. We're gonna start out with a coarse die. This here is a 10 millimeter die. So this first pass through, we've got the partially frozen pork, no seasonings, on a coarse grind. One of the great things about these LEM grinders is they've got what they call the big bite technology. So as this is moving along, it's got a longer thread right here where you drop in the meat. And that usually means that it snags whatever it is really easily. So a lot of times this plunger is just completely unnecessary. So this is our first grind, our coarse grind, and at this point we're going to add some seasonings. Let me go grab those from the fridge. Now I've scaled out these seasonings for a five pound batch and put them in the fridge because again, we want everything to be cold. This is our slow smoke gold, the House of Q mustard sauce. We're gonna add an equal amount of Cattleman's Grill, eight second ride an equal amount of grunt rub, again for the garlic. And we've got some cayenne. This is gonna give it some of the red color and that kick that we're looking for out of a hot link. And last, a bit of smoked paprika for the color and the extra depth of flavor. So we wanna give this just a really quick mix by hand. You don't wanna work the meat too much because you will begin to melt that fat. Just trying to get everything pretty evenly incorporated. Now it's pretty hot out here on the patio. It's about 90 degrees. And just to make sure we keep the mixture cold, I want to throw it back into the fridge for another 20 minutes before we do our last grind. And at this point, we're getting ready to do this final grind. You want to switch out your die for a finer die. This one right here, four and a half millimeter. And the reason we're going down to a finer die is because I want a finer texture in this sausage. I don't want the hot link to be chunky like I would maybe an Italian sausage or something like that. So we're gonna take it down so it's a little bit smoother. It's crazy just how much aroma is coming off of just cold sausage. I mean, the garlic's already jumping out to me from the grunt rub, and definitely get that cayenne, that chili powder thing going as well. Beautiful red color on the sausage. Working out the last of it now. All right, that's exactly what we're looking for. At this point, it's a really good idea for you to do a little bit of a fry test. So what I do is take just a pinch of that sausage, cook it up in the skillet and taste it and make sure I like where all the seasonings are. Now this specific recipe I've done, 
I don't know, a handful of times, enough to know that it's gonna be right where I want it. But for you, at first time at home, always taste your food. Make sure it's exactly where you want it. There's just one last step before we get to actually stuffing the sausage, and that's to create the primary bind, which we're gonna do by mixing on this stand mixer with the paddle attachment. Now this is really important because this gives sausage its sausagey texture. It's what holds everything together. So again, with the paddle attachment, we'll start out slow. Work our way up just a little bit. So what we're looking for, 30 to 60 seconds is all it's gonna take. But essentially when you pick up this sausage, it all wants to hold together now. It's changed the structure and that's what we're looking for. So that's right where we want it. It's tacky and it holds together. We're not gonna waste any time. We wanna make sure we keep this cold. I'm gonna transfer it right over to our stuffer. And I'm gonna press this flat. You don't want any air bubbles in there because we don't want any air bubbles in our cased sausage. Now before I transfer the casings onto the horn, we're just gonna put a little fat here for lubricant to make sure everything's moving. And then I'll show you the setup and the best way to get these on here. So start by taking one end of the casing, open that up, and much like we did when we were rinsing earlier, I'm gonna scoop a little bit of water in there. And this water I want right down here so it's, it's down in the valley in between these two. I'm gonna to start to slide the casing onto the horn. Now the water stays down there in the valley, but what it's doing is it's making sure that everything's nice and slippery so that it moves without tearing. Perfect. So then we're just repeating this process until we've got all of our casings right here on the horn. And I'll move a little bit of this water back to the bowl, but we're gonna leave some here in the tray as well because it's gonna help the sausage move around and spin as it starts coming off of the horn. There's a couple different ways to get this started, but what I like to do is crank until the sausage comes all the way to the end, and then we know that there's no air left in the end of the sausage, so you can go ahead and tie it off first thing. And just gonna start slowly cranking away. Kinda wanna let the casing tell you when it's full. It should take very little pressure. Just using my thumb and a finger or two to kinda guide things. And then when we get a bubble or something like this where it looks like there's a decent amount of air, you can just take the back of a knife and tap it. It's not gonna cause a blowout, but it does let that air out of there. So we don't want to overstuff these because that will cause a blowout. Also, if you overstuff, you'll have a hard time forming links later on. Right now, this is nice and pliable. We could form a link here if we want to. So we're not going super full. Now you notice that it kind of wants to curl in a certain direction and you just want to follow that. You'll see this actually has a twist to it right now where if we get all the way up here into this casing that's on the horn, it looks like it's twisted. So I might just help it along by go ahead and twist that and it lets it move a little bit more naturally. Now hopefully I don't have to spend too much time doing that. I can just go ahead and fill away. Now when we get down to the end, we're getting close here. We're gonna slow down just a little bit. I'm gonna give ourselves some room to tie off. So I'm actually gonna back off just to take all of the pressure off of there. And I can leave that untied for now until I finish making these links. Now I know that hot links actually has the word links in it, right? But I like to cook them whole sometimes. Just cook that whole spiral up just like that and you can slice them to serve. All right, and we're here at the end. We've run out of sausage to stuff. You can see this one went ahead and filled a little more full so we can cook it as a whole ring. We're just gonna cut off right at the end here and tie this one off.
Now I also want to show you a really simple technique for forming links. What you want to do, we call this pinch, pinch, twist, and just repeat it over and over again. You set your length, pinch, set your length, pinch, twist it up. Same direction every time. Pinch, pinch, twist. Pinch, pinch, twist. And since we haven't tied off this end piece yet, it's got as much room as it needs to expand out, and then we can kind of tighten it down so we get a nice firm link there. And that's all there is to it. From here you've got options. If you want to go the low and slow route and try to incorporate a lot more smoke flavor, what you want to do is first rest the sausages in the fridge overnight uncovered. This forms the pellicle on the outside which allows the smoke to really attach to the sausage. But what we're going to do today is cook them off hot and fast on the Kamado Joe ceramic grill. We've got the Kamado Joe preheated, it's running nice and hot, and we've set it up for indirect cooking to prevent flare-ups. All right, let's start this main guy right here in the center. And then we'll put our links around the outside. All right, so we're just gonna close this up, let these get to cooking. We're looking for an internal temperature of 160 degrees. Ooh, really nice browning and caramelization on the outside there. That's great. That's exactly what we're looking for. Not too much, not too light. Now inevitably as the grease begins to drip out of the sausages and onto the plate or onto hot coals, it's going to flare up. Now, it's really easy to control that. You just gotta cut the oxygen down. So cook with the door closed in order to keep the flare-ups from getting out of control. All right, well, we've hit our 160 target. Really great little browning on the outside there. Start taking these guys off. All right, let's slice into one of these. Check that out. Ooh, look at all that fat. And it stayed in place because we kept the sausage cold the whole time. It didn't leak out right away. So that's a really beautiful structure for a sausage. It's all held together very nicely. The fat doesn't automatically pour out. You gotta squeeze it to see. And it's distributed really well. I like to have some mustard sauce or some barbecue sauce on the side with the hot links. I'm gonna get into this Big Rick's original great barbecue sauce. Mmm. But it can't outshine that hot link. Just wait for it and that heat, it starts creeping up on you. It's on the back end, but it's there for sure. I love the mustard mixed in there as well. Just a little bit of tanginess. It matches the heat really well that comes off of the eight second ride. It comes out of that cayenne and there's just a touch of smokiness from that paprika. Very nice. Now when it comes down to all of these different flavors we're talking about, I'm not writing the Bible here. You guys do whatever you like at home. I mean, these are just some of the suggested flavors that I really like in a hot link. And you can definitely mess around and figure out what you like. I think what's really important to take away from all of this is just that process of the sausage making. Making sure you're keeping everything cool, making sure you get that primary bind. Do it right and you're gonna be happy with the results. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check us out at atbbq.com. Everything in this video from the grinder to the stuffer, the seasonings, the casings, and of course the grill is available for purchase at atbbq.com. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button and the alert bell next to it to be notified when we drop a new video. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.